about the Lord, how he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how he picked me up and turned me around, how he placed my feet. On solid ground When I think about the Lord How he saved me How he raised me How he filled me Good evening, everyone. My name is Joan Sapriya, and I want to give you a warm, warm welcome to Malton Church this evening as we present our gospel series, Christ for the Crisis. 
And for those of you who are joining us online through Zoom or on YouTube, a big warm welcome to you. And whenever you have an opportunity to come and meet us in person, we will be waiting for you at the door. Again, Christ for the crisis. What a fitting topic. Because if you turn on your TV, if you look into our world, we can see that our world is in crisis. And the only solution, the only answer is Jesus Christ. He was the solution in the past. He's the solution today. And he will be the solution for us tomorrow. So do not delay. You need to come and get in touch with Jesus Christ. Christ for the crisis with our evangelist, uh, Jerome Gordon. It's powerful. There's lots of energy in here, and so we want you to be here with us. Now, I want to share just a few highlights um, on our, in our service, uh, one of which is if you like to receive gifts as much as we like to give away gifts, you need to be here. Now, we're also going to, oh, I'm not going to say test, but we want to see how much you recall the things that you have learned each night. And so we're going to be having a nightly quiz, okay? And at the end of the week, we're going to just see how well you do. And again, we like to give things away. So you need to be here for the quiz so that we can give you some, some, some free gifts. And of course, each night there will be a special feature, uh, one of which tonight will be on health. So one of our nurses or our nutritionists will be presenting um, on most nights. So that is our, our, our information for the night. If you would please just bow your head with me as we just have a, a short word of prayer. Holy Father in heaven, we just want to thank you so much for who you are and that you are God. Lord, we just pray this evening that you will bring all of our visitors, all of our guests here safely. Be with them in a special way, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good evening, church. I was about to say happy Sabbath, but good evening. Welcome back to the Christ for the Crisis Gospel Series, and it's good to see you all again. Welcome returning members and visitors. And right now, we're just going to engage in song, worship, um, song service and make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen. So our first song will be number 499, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
our next song will be number 249, Praise Him, Praise Him. be number 309, I Surrender All.
last verse. Our last song, or please stand with us as we sing our theme song, Learning to Lean.
Good evening. It is time to ask the Holy Spirit to join us as we pray. Kneel where you can. Good evening, Father God. It is truly good to be in your house today. Thank you for the provision of the day. And thank you for once again preparing the battlefield as we go on it. Arm us all there, Father. Arm the singing evangelist, Sanjay, as he come and just woo us in an inspiration of a thought. And for the pastor who is about to break bread, Father. Be with him. We've been blessed thus far as these uh, evening of campaign carried on. Give everyone traveling mercy. And for those who are here, keep them tentative and aware as the crisis is expelling so much. We need you now to fill this house. Fill it up, dear Father, with the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Amen. Good evening, everyone. So we are together again, just praising the Lord. We are together again. I believe in one accord. Therefore, something good is about to happen. Something good is in store because we are together again, just praising the Lord. And when God's people come together to lift the name of Jesus, his presence is with us to bless us and to do us good. So I would like to have my quote of welcome to each person here this evening. And I pray that you'll open your hearts to receive God's special blessing. Now, what time it is? It is what? And I'm Mr. Okay, so to prove that I'm Mr. Generous, um, I have a gift for everybody. 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 Amen. So I'm coming back to that. But let me... Now I can just give you the gift right now. The ushers are ready to give you a copy of the Great Controversy. And I'm sure some of you have one already, so you can give that to your friend. Amen. So at the time appointed, you can just give everybody a copy. In case you have one, you just give it to a friend. We have about four boxes at the front. And I don't think the books should be in the boxes. They need to be out. So we'd like you to help us to get them out. So I'm giving them to you, and you're going to give them to others. Amen? Amen. Just in case you don't have a copy, keep that copy. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. I'm Mr. Generous. All right. So let me see the hands of a visitor here. Let me see the hands of all our visitors. I have something special for all our visitors. Just raise your hands. Okay. Okay. Oh, is it one visitor? Okay. Two? Okay. Three? Okay, and these two um, young ladies on my right, met them earlier. I noticed they escorted a handsome gentleman on my left. I said, that gentleman is special, two beautiful ladies. I'm not sure if one was on the left, one was on the right, but we are so happy that you are here this evening, amen? Okay, so quickly, um, ushers, could you give um, these, uh, to these ladies standing, could you just stand for us? Thank you very much for coming. Amen. Amen. Now, the evangelist gave a challenge yesterday. What is the challenge? That those of you are in love, or you are in love, and you have written, because tonight's topic is about what? The greatest love letter. And I'm sure some of us have done something like that in the past. So I hope you have your love letter ready. I see some people looking in their bags. I don't know if you're looking for your love letter. Uh, just give us a summary because if some of you were to, to start to read tonight, we're not going to leave here. But just give us a, a summary. Like um, you are the creme de la creme, you are the cream of the crop. And each time I look at you, my heart skip a beat. Something like that. Right, brother and sister um, Mackenzie? Okay. <laughs> I hope you have your love letter ready because you have a special gift. You have yours? It's in your heart. We need, we, give us a part of it. Just give us a, an idea. Okay, uh, my time is moving. No. I have here a masterpiece. 
You want it? First, you'd like to know what is in the box, right? Okay, the value is 351 Canadian dollars. And all you need to do is to bring the most visitors for this week. And it must be more than 10. But if you have 10, we're not that you know, exact, you'll get um, the masterpiece. So this is the Encyclopedia of Foods and Their Healing Power. It's a three volume, volume one. Now listen, this is for $351. And all you need to do is to bring at least 10 persons. I think that is very easy. Last year, Sister Reed brought about 15 persons one Sabbath. You remember that Sabbath? Okay, so you can do it. So volume one talks about the science of food. This is volume two. It speaks about the healing powers of food. And volume three talks about preventative and curative recipes. This is a masterpiece. So I'm giving you a challenge. Amen. And just in case you come short, we have other gifts. So stay tuned. And before I leave this coming Sabbath, we're going to have an awesome time. At a certain place, I would say it would be a catawampus time. A big time. Because this coming Sabbath will be V-Day. And V-Day will be Victory Day. And Victory Day will be B-Day. And B-Day will be baptism. Yes, there will be a baptism this coming Sabbath. Amen. Amen. There will be, by the grace of God, a baptism. And there's another big one. You want to hear it? Yeah. There will be a wedding. Shh. 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 Right here. Right here. We're going to have a wedding. We're going to have a real bride and a real groom. In the afternoon, this one to be second to none. Now, those of us who are married, this is a time to, to do it again. So I don't know if my wife will entertain me, but um, I would like to propose to her again. After 20, next month will be 29 years. And some of you, you know, 50, 60s. But it will be good to see all the couples, brother and sister Kennedy, walking down the aisle, brother and sister Henry, brother and sister Thompson, I don't know if we should say it red and white or something like that. And what I'm going to ask all the couples to stand right, to sit right up front. And we're going to repeat the marital vow for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health until death does part. And then the time will come and pastor will say, kiss the bride. <laughs> can you imagine, can you imagine some people, you know, maybe it has been a long time, they haven't. <laughs> so, um, man. Be honest with you, if I had planned to be away this week, I would have to cancel my flight. I have to be here, live and direct. So uh, this is a word for all those who are married. Please be here. I have my boat, my boat tie is ready. I will be here in fine style. What time it will be? About 5 o'clock we will begin. Maybe 6 no, 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 I can't begin any time. I just you know some of you need enough time to get ready, right? So maybe about 6 o'clock, we go from 6 to about 6.30, and then we segue right into the evangelistic series with the preacher. And I think we should have a cake and wine. And so when we are through, we'll celebrate. All in favor, say amen. amen. Thank you very much. God bless you. Looking forward to tell you more about it. I'm excited. And when I come up, I will say, I'm hippopotamus to be here. And I'm elephant to see you. And we're going to have a whale of a time. Thank you. Hey, well, thank you for that wonderful announcement. I won't be getting married, but I'll be here. <laughs> okay, I'm here. 
I'm here to, um, <clears throat> excuse me, to do the post assessment. So how this works is in university, we'll say after the lecture, there will be a post assessment. We want to see what you have learned, the takeaway message. So this, for this series, I'll be handing out the um, post assessment. Your post assessment will be based on the lecture or the um, presentation the night before. Having said that, we will be looking at what was said last night. So how it works, there'll be just five questions. Okay, um, I believe that you have got, you've been given your cards and your pencil. I'd ask that you please put your name and your telephone number on the paper as you will be evaluated. And there will be a, a, a surprise for you at the end. As I believe in diversity and inclusion, your um, test will, the format will be very inclusive, meaning that I'll ask different formats, different kind of question, so that everyone is included. I will start with question number one. And, um, okay, Pastor Gordon. No, okay, great question. All you have to do is number one, and then, for example, you will select the correct answer. So you'll put one A or one B, that's it. You don't have to write out the whole thing. So I will start. Question number one, Pastor Gordon effectively states the title, Christ for the Crisis, is used to signify, first A, the, belie <clears throat> the belief that worldly problems have no solution, B, the idea that Jesus Christ's teachings are paramount during difficult times. C, the belief that Christ caused worldly dilemmas. And D, the idea that Christianity itself is in a crisis. So I'd ask that you take a moment and you select just one. Or if you want, you can select two. It's up to you. Okay, um, I'll pause for a bit, 10 seconds. You should be able to write it down. Moving along, question number two. The phrase, and I quote, righteousness exalts a nation, end quote, implies every member of a nation needs to be righteous to raise its status and success of a nation is measured by its wealth. A, is it true or is it B, false, based on the teachings last night? Moving along, question number three. We are completely free to choose. And our choice leads to consequences, whether, it be, whether good or bad. God gave man the power of choice. Without choice, they can be no love. A, true, or B, false. Okay, question number four. Who is the only one to solve the problem of sin according to the Christian doctrine and what was so eloquently stated in um, Pastor Gordon's presentation on Sabbath afternoon? A, Buddha, B, Muhammad, C, Krishna, D, Socrates, or E, Jesus Christ? who can be the one that solved the world's problem? <laughs> Lastly, number five. According to the Bible, what is portrayed as the greatest problem in our universe? Let me repeat it. 
according to the Bible, what is portrayed as the greatest problem in our universe? A, economic disparity. B, political unrest. C, um, climate change. Or D, um, sin. You just need to circle it on your paper, please. Thank you. Okay, I was asked to repeat number one, so let's go back to number one. Pastor Gordon effectively states the title, Christ for the Crisis, is used to signify, signify A, the belief that worldly problems have no solution, B, the idea that Jesus Christ's teachings are paramount during difficult times, See the belief that Christ caused worldly dilemmas, and see the idea that Christianity itself is in crisis. Now I'd ask that you please circle the correct answer and you will submit your card with the offering, and it will be graded, and you will get your answer on Tuesday. Um, I hope you do well, and thank you so much for your participation. Good evening, everyone. You know, when you come to the Lord to worship before him, it's always good to bring an offering. And so this evening, I'm going to ask the deacon and the deaconesses, or the ushers, as a matter of fact, to wait upon you for your offering that you brought to us. You notice that Mr. Generous is here, and he will give you as, as many things as he can. Well, we have to use the funds that you're given. You're giving us to... Uh, take care of that expenses. So please give generously as the ushers wait upon you. Or shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father and our God, we thank you so much for the gifts that you've given to us. We thank you, Lord, for this evangelistic series that you have helped us to reach this point where it is a possibility, it's working well, and people are turning out. Lord, we pray that more and more we'll come to listen to your words. Right now, Lord, we are going to collect an offering to the first of the expenses. Let your spirit come up in the mind of those who are given to give as much as they can. And they will bless accordingly. Bless those who could give. Bless those who could not. But next time, Lord, they will be able to contribute as much as they can. Let your name be glorified as we give a gift to you, but to the advancement of your work. This is our prayer in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen.
Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to our special feature, Sun Health tonight. Um, we're going to be talking about sleep, good habits, and disorders. Um, I know this is a, Tommy touched briefly on it last night. However, we'll go into it. Um, good sleep habits are fundamental to our overhaul um, health and well-being. Um, that's physical, mental, and emotional. Unfortunately, many of us struggle with sleep-related issues, um, including a common sleep disorder, uh, sleep apnea. So the hours of sleep that we need um, differs for children and adults. For example, an infant will sleep up to 12 to 16 hours, while a 13 to 18 year old would sleep eight to 10. And for most healthy um, adults, um, we sleep seven or more hours. Um, poor sleep quality increases the risk of diabetes, heart disease, and mental ill health. Um, and so many changes in these habits relate you know, when we get over 50 or 60 years old, where melatonin production is decreased. Um, that is the sleep hormone. Other things that may affect our sleep is hormonal changes during pregnancy, menopause, and people that are on multiple medications, um, people who are lonely, environmental changes. You know, some of us, we can't sleep in noise or light. And if we have high blood pressure or you suffer from acid reflux, to name a few. So the importance of good sleep habits. So um, sleep, as we said, adequate sleep plays a vital role in our cognitive processes like um, memory, learning, and problem solving. Also, it enhances attention, concentration, and decision-making abilities. Emotional regulation. Quality sleep is essential for emotional stability. Because if we are deprived of sleep, we get very irritable, we'll have mood swings and increased stress levels. Physical health. Optimal sleep supports the immune system and reduces the risk of um, chronic diseases. Sleep also helps our productivity. Well-rested individuals exhibit a higher level of productivity, creativity, and performance both academically and in the professional setting. So if you don't get enough sleep, of course you'll be sleeping on the job or at school. Mental health. Sleep disturbances are associated with an increased risk of mood disorders such as depression and anxiety. And some of the common um, sleep disorders that we hear about is insomnia, which involves um, difficulty falling asleep or staying asleep or experiencing non-restorative sleep. There's one called restless leg syndrome, and this is the uncomfortable sensation in the legs. Um, often described, some people have tingling, crawling, throbbing, or this irresistible urge to move the legs, and it usually worsens at night. Narcolepsy is another one. It's a neurological disorder that um, characterized by excessive daytime sleepiness and um, sudden loss of muscle tone. Sometimes persons might be hallucinating as well with that. Sleep apnea. Sleep apnea is a prevalent sleep disorder, and this is characterized by interruptions in breathing during sleep. You have two main types. You have the obstructive sleep apnea and central sleep apnea. And tonight, we'll just look at obstructive. Um, obstructive sleep apnea occurs when the throat muscles relax excessively, causing the airway to collapse and become blocked during sleep. Unfortunately, a lot of people pass away in their sleep because of this disorder. Um, some of the symptoms include um, snoring, you know, gasping or choking during sleep. You may wake up in the morning and your throat is really dry and your mouth. Um, there's excessive daytime sleepiness, um, morning headache, headaches or you know, if you, have fam if, you live, um, if you don't live alone, family members may observe that you um, are having pauses during your sleep, pausing breathing, sorry. This is, this, this is disease is diagnosed by, um, through a sleep study, which monitors your breathing patterns 
and your oxygen level and other physiological parameters during the sleep. Um, the treatment. Treatment for sleep apnea is usually aimed to alleviate the symptoms, um, improve your sleep quality, and reduce the associated health risks that we talked about earlier. And so some of the treatments you may look at is lifestyle modification. If somebody is you know, grossly overweight, they might think of decreasing their weight because um, it will help you know, to decrease the, the amount of soft tissue in the throat that contributes to the airway obstruction. Positional therapy is another thing that you could use. Um, it's about using devices or techniques to, um, to help you in your sleeping position to minimize airway obstruction. You may have special pillows, you know, uh, wearing certain devices to help you not to sleep on your back, you know, to keep you on your side. And then we have continuous air positive airway pressure therapy, known widely as CPAP. So CPAP is a very common therapy used for severe, moderate to severe sleep apnea, and it involves wearing a mask connected to a machine that delivers, you know, continuous stream of air pressure to help keep the airway open. You have other things like oral appliances that um, these are devices, you know, reposition the jaw or the tongue to keep the airway open. Thereby, it helps to reduce snoring and the effect of the apnea episodes. And in severe cases, you may need to have surgery. And the surgery is usually done to correct any anatomical um, abnormalities that contributes to this airway obstruction. And that is severe cases. Overall, the choice of treatment for sleep apnea depends on the severity of the symptoms, individual preferences, and the underlying health conditions. In conclusion, some um, tips that we can use is to um, improve our sleep apnea is maintain a consistent um, wake time, um, limit daytime naps up to 20 to 30 minutes, keep physically active, develop and stick to a sleep schedule, avoid screen time in bed. I know everybody check their emails and their WhatsApp in bed, avoid that. Proper meal timing and seek professional help. If you want good sleep, if you're you know, thinking that you may have um, some issue with um, sleep apnea, please seek professional help because it can be detrimental. And third John 1-2 tells us, beloved, we wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health. And for those who are stressed and burdened, you know, and can't sleep at night, Matthew 11:28 says, Jesus says, come unto me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. May God help us as we get some good sleep tonight. Thank you. Evening, church. of crimson God wrote his love on a hillside so long long ago for you and for me Jesus died in love's greatest story was told. I love you. I love you. That's what Calvary said. I love I love you, written 
down through the ages, God wrote his love with the same hands that suffered and bled. He was giving all he had to give. A message so easily read I love you I love you That's what Calvary said I love Good evening, everybody. How is everybody today? Did you have a fine day today? Was God good to anybody today? If God was good to you, can I see you lift your hand and say, thank you, Jesus. Now, I want you to turn to somebody sitting next to you and say, hello, neighbor. Jesus loves you, and so do I. Now, I... I am delighted to be here this evening to share God's holy words. I am happy for the privilege to stand in the pulpits of your distinguished shepherd, Pastor the Right Honorable Rohan Sewell, a man of God. I may call him a sanctified and scintillating soldier and seraphic soldier of the cross Amen. we're glad that I, I told him that i said pat you are my pastor once i'm in your territory you're my pastor so if anybody asks me who is your pastor pastor gordon i say my pastor is the right honorable dr rohan sewell and i'm also happy for his dear wife sister millicent wonderful couple indeed and I am happy to know the Malton brethren. May I say 
the magnificent and marvelous Malton members. I am delighted to be here. Now, may I see the hands of all the visitors who are in our midst tonight. Visitors, you are not a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, but you are here. Raise your hand. Let me see you. I want to give you a special welcome. I know you have been acknowledged before, but I like to do it too. Anybody? Raise your hand. Let me see your hand. Okay, I see a hand over there, and I see two hands there. Awesome. Remember, we say that the Martin Church is a garden, right, Mr. Singing Evangelist? And in the garden, we have daffodils and chrysanthemums and hibiscus and you name it. But the visitors, they are the roses in our midst. And they come in different colors. And you unfold your petals and your sweet aroma emanate. And you make this place salubrious. And you add to the ambience of the worship of the hall. We are so happy that you have come. May God bless you richly. Well, we are going to the word of the Lord. Pastor, I was waiting to hear my, my um, the song. Yes, and I was meditating in the hallway, and then I realized, but there's a break, so it must be my time. So I, I, I wanted to hear the theme song. It gives me some inspiration, but we go ahead in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's pray. We're talking about love letter tonight. Let's pray. Father, the moment has come for you to speak through your servant to your people. I am nothing in your sight, Father. I am just a sinful lump of clay. I pray that self will be crucified and that Jesus Christ alone will be glorified. Touch my brain cells, Father. Give me the grace to run this race. Give me the unction to function. Please, Father, have your way tonight. Move through this place, Lord. For those who have heavy burdens, we pray that you will be the burden bearer. For those who are shackled and tied up with all kinds of sins and circumstances, we pray that you will loose them in the name of Jesus and set somebody free tonight. Have your way, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. What is tonight's topic, everybody? The greatest love letter. No, I did not hear, Pastor. You had them share their... Oh, well, so we have the present, and I want to know the ones who got... Sister, Sister Lorna, looking at you. The ones who got the nicest... What do you think are the nicest love verses from your husband, your wife, or your girlfriend. Could you raise your hand? I want you to share just a line or two. I know if we were to allow you, you could share an epistle of love, but we don't want the whole epistle. We just want to hear. Come on, tell me. Don't be as old-fashioned like me. I told my wife, roses are red, violets are blue, sugar is sweet. Not as sweet as you. And she said, you're boring. So that's an old thing. I say it's old, but it's still good, right? All right, anybody? Come on, don't be shy now. I know some of you have the letters tucked away. Come on, anybody who is, who is going to share with me? Tell me, man. Come on. Mr. Singing Evangelist, I know you don't want to sing. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Anybody? Come on. All right, you don't want to share with me uh, something you, you hear from, um, <laughs> from your, your lover? Don't be so shy, man. Come on. Here, let me hear something. Have mercy, Lord. <laughs> you know, your, your pastor, I, I know when he was, he was fishing after this lady Millicent. You know, we were together canvassing. We were in Kingston, you know, and I... The man walks lyrical, you know. <laughs> oh, mercy. All right, you know what? Before, the, before we're done, one of these days, we will take some of them. But let's get on with the word. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's go. The greatest love letter. Love is a mysterious thing that everybody wants. Am I right? Everybody wants love. And Mr. Singing Evangelist is smiling, you know. Um, Everybody wants love, right? Every young person, every young woman dreams of falling in love. 
And I see some smiles, I see some eyes sparkling looking at me, you know. And you say, Pastor, yeah, right. Uh, every young person dreams of falling in love. Love, come on, read with me. Love causes old men to act like what? And young men to act like? Man, you see some guys in their, their, their 75 and they look like, man, they... I used to listen, man, they, they, they act like young men, right? People fight for love and people die for love, no? If love is worth fighting for, living for, and dying for, then we must not settle for any counterfeit. Amen? We must have the real thing. I remember once I saw a man beating his woman. I mean, you guys don't do that. That was not a bad corner of Jamaica, you know? <laughs> and I, I, I jumped in there, you know? I, and I, I pulled him away. I said, oh, pastor, you're skinny. You don't have any muscles. I said, you'll be joking. Pulled him away, man, and I said, man, don't do that, man. And then when he was finished, you know, he, 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 when it was all over and she, she was sobbing, he, he put her in his lap and, and hugged her up and said, Maureen, why are you provoke me, sir? Don't you know I love you? That's some kind of love, isn't it? Uh, it that, that's certainly not the real thing. Come on and say amen out there. You can't be loving the woman and doing boof, baf, kukum, kum, kum. No, no, no. You can't be doing that, right? You need to have the real thing, and the real thing is awesome. Amen? I tell you, the Bible says, it's awesome for this cause shall a man leave his what? Father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two shall be one flesh. Mr. Technician, just press the escape key to get rid of that tag. They shall be one flesh. So I have a question to ask you. Is there such a thing as love at first sight? Is there? All right, you can you is there love at first sight? Ladies, you answer. Are those who believe that there's love at first sight, raise your hand. All right, okay, all right. So then if you can fall in love in an instant, then it means that you can fall out of love in an instant. All right. Well, when a single guy sees a nice girl for the first time and his heart skips a beat, what is he usually feeling? Is it love? Or is it desire or admiration? Is there a difference between love and desire, or love and lust? You know, one is like a gas stove, and one is like an electric stove. Lust is like a gas stove, and it sees, boom, all kind of biochemical reaction happening inside. Huh? Uh, that's, that's infatuation, that's desire. But love is like an electric stove, man. Love takes time to warm up, and then it gets real hot. Come on and say amen out there. You know what I'm talking about. Love, uh, true love, true love gets stronger as the days go by. Like a tender plant, love must be cared for and watered as, as it grows, right? Um, it remains strong even after the children are born. And when the children are old enough, please put them out of the room. Some of you mothers like to keep the children in the room longer and you make the husband suffer. But I won't go too much in that tonight. But the, you keep, it must go strong when, when, when they're young and it brings joy and happiness throughout the youthful days. And even in the senior years, you must let the fire continue to burn. Back in Jamaica, we say the older the moon. Amen, somebody. So love must continue. So it's important to find out what true love is. True lust is a changeable feeling, but love is an enduring what? Principle. Huh? True love does not come from Hollywood. True love comes from where? From heaven. Somebody say amen out there. And some of you, you're watching Hollywood and you're getting a skewed version of love. And you think love is just an interminable round of kissing and mushy mushy and driving in limousines. And then when you get married and dirty dishes in the sink and the bills are high and the funds are low, you want to divorce. Because you had a skewed version of love. Love is a real something. And you must love even when the dishes are dirty and the bills are low and you can't find diapers. You love and you love him when he has plenty of teeth. And you love him when they drop out and he has one left. He's still love. Somebody say amen. 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 Because love is a principle. And it never changes. Amen. And some of you, you say you like the lady because she has Coca-Cola bottle shape. Huh? But let me tell you something. If that's what you married a woman for, poor lady going to be in trouble. Because time, childbearing, and gravity is going to re-sculpt that. And after a while, you may just have a string bean, but you must love her just the same. 
Somebody say amen out there. Amen. amen. Well, that is what true love is. But I want to tell you, beloved, that the Bible defines love for us. Amen. The Bible tells us that love is from God. God is the source of love. The clear fountain of love that never runs dry. Somebody say amen out there. Never runs dry. God loves unconditionally. You know what that means? God loves you just the way you are. Do you know that? He loves you just the way you are. He loves you as you are. So you might be, you might be muscular like Pastor Rohan Sewell or skinny like Pastor Gordon. God loves you just the same. Right? You might have short hair or long hair. God loves you. Amen? Amen. God loves you. Now, I, when I say God loves you that, the way you are, now, that doesn't mean that you must not take care of yourself, you know. Ladies, you must still go to the hairdresser and you must still get the... Yes, and get the nails done and the toes and the... And Come on and talk to me someday. And gentlemen, you must pay for it. Come on and say amen out here. When you love your woman, you must spend money on her. Amen. Yes, man. Because that is demonstrating God's love. Because God loves and he gives. You can't say you love the woman. And she wearing the same hat and boot for 10 years. And the boot lean and the hat bent like it was in Noah's Ark. And you're in the finest suit. And you say you love the woman. No, no, no. Take her. I won't even say Walmart. Take her. Where's the expensive store over here? Yeah? Huh? Wherever it is. But take her there and let her try on the dress. And you pay for it. Come on and say amen, ladies. True love comes from God. And wherever God is in the heart... True love will be seen in the life because the Bible says God is love. Come on, let's read it together. It says, the one who does not love does not know God for God is? God is love. Amen. And love is sacrificial. If you love, you must make sacrifice. You can't say love and everything is just about me, I, me. She's not listening to me, me. You know, I'm a marriage officer. And every time there's a marriage conflict, you know, the basis of all marriage conflicts is selfishness. When she starts to talk, I'm listening because I know I'm going to hear selfishness. When he starts to talk, oh, she's not listening to me, pastor, she's not following me. I just, I know. Anytime there is a marriage conflict, somebody, either one or both, are being selfish. And if you just pause and evaluate yourself, you'll realize if you get rid of that selfishness and become sacrificial, which means it's not me first, it's God, my spouse, and then me. Somebody say amen out there. Amen. So love must be accepting. Accept your wife, man, as the way she is. Don't tell her, oh, come, you, you need to look like Sister Janie. Look at Sister Janie. No, no, no. Leave her alone. She needs to look like herself. I must be accepting, amen? And of course, you must be committed. You must love her and stay with her. Love him and stay with him. Be committed. Amen. You will always see more handsome guys and more pretty girls and whatever, but that's all right. You must stay with the one you have. Don't tell me that the grass is greener on the other side of the fence. If it looks that way, it's because you're not watering your own lawn. Water your lawn. Somebody say amen out there. And your lawn will be green too. Amen. Amen. So you must be committed. True love is always anxious to express itself to the loved. Am I right? Yeah, man. Um, true love must communicate. True love must have something to say. A silent lover is a boring lover. You must have something to say, man. Amen. And I don't know what's going on. When they're courting, they're driving in the car and they're laughing and they're talking. And after they get married, they're driving and you think it's two statues sitting in there. One driving, the other one. All these days, they become more sophisticated technologically. And so one is swiping on, text, on Facebook and the other one is on WhatsApp. Oh no, come on. We need to get rid of that. True love must talk to one another. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And if you are not there... If you've gone on a trip in Grenada, beautiful Grenada, or you've gone to beautiful Jamaica, or you've gone to beautiful Trinidad, or beautiful Dominica, no, all the islands are beautiful. I've been to almost all of them. I love Dominica. 
I love Trinidad. When I land in Trinidad, I love doubles. Anybody here from Trini? Anybody know about doubles? Doubles? Yeah, I love doubles. I'm going to eat some more doubles when I come back. Anyway, let's move on. But you must have something to say. If your husband is gone to the islands, send them a love letter. Right? There is something, even though she's not there, when she sends you a love text, it's like, man, the person not there, you know what the love letter is, the love text, the love email. It's just like you can feel the embrace when you read it. You say, ooh, man, I didn't know John loved me so much. You know, look at this. You must send a love letter, right? Because God loves and God sends a love letter. God's love letter to man is the Holy Scriptures. Amen? The Holy Bible is the greatest book, and it has the greatest love verse. Do you know what the greatest love verse is? Let's go together. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his... Come on, keep reading it. Should not perish, but have everlasting life. The Bible was written by over 40 different authors from many walks of life. Kings and peasants and philosophers, fishermen, poets, statesmen, and scholars. The Bible was written over a period of 1,600 years. And it spanned over 40 generations on three continents. The Bible is an interesting book. It was written in different places, in the wilderness, in dungeons, in palaces, at different times, in war, in peace. The Bible was written in different moods and written in different languages, Aramaic, Greek, Greek, and Hebrew. The Bible is a unique book. It's the world's bestseller to this day. No other religious books can rival the Bible. Somebody say amen out there. Over 100 million new copies are sold every year in addition to what is given away. Every nation regards the Bible as their book. When you go to Ghana, the, Ghan the, 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 the folks in Ghana believe it's their book. The Jamaicans, the Bible is... No, the Bible is a Fibi book, Fibi book, right? Yes, everybody owns it because there is something about the Word of God that satisfies our deepest longing. Somebody say amen out there. The Word of God is always relevant. It is never outdated. I want you to know that. The Bible is relevant. Now... This is a maximum security prison in the United States. It's called Angola. You know, there was this guy named Carl Bain. Carl, I mean, Burl Cain. Burl Cain was a warder. It was a controversial warder. He was a radical warder. He said, I'm going to change this place. You know what he did? He put up scriptures all over. He invited religious people to come in. And as soon as the Bible verses were all paraded around and people were coming in to pray and read scriptures, the violence decreased tremendously in the prison. I said the Bible is still relevant. Somebody say amen out there. Why is it relevant? Because it came from God. What the Bible says, all scripture is given by what? And it's profitable for what? Doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. It says all scripture is good. Not just some. There are some people who say it's just the Old Testament good. And they say, oh, we are Hebrew Israelites and we, uh, we don't believe in the New Testament. No, 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 no. I don't believe that. There are some who say, oh, we are, we are New Testament Christians. We don't believe in the Old Testament. I don't believe that either. I believe that the Bible is correct when it says all scripture is good. From Genesis to Revelation, it's all good, and we need all of it. And it's profitable for doctrines, for corrections in righteousness. It is good. And listen to what the Bible says, 2 Peter 1, 20 to 21. It says, know this first, that no prophecy of the scriptures of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by a womb. So the Bible is not an ordinary book. It was written by man, but the ideas didn't come from man. It's God who inspired the men to write the Bible. So the Bible is the written word, and Jesus is the living word. And they both have something in common. Jesus was 100% God and 100% man. The Bible is 100%, um, well, it's it's terrestrial in that was written by man but it is celestial in that was inspired by God and so beloved we need to understand that the Bible 
Was it come about by Sir one Rastafarian gentleman after he smoked his thing called Sensi I think that's the name of it. He said that the Bible was written by a monk. In, I said, no, no, no. Yeah, long before that monk was born, the Bible has been around. Haven't you heard of the Dead Sea Scrolls? The Bible is God's holy word. Amen? And here the Bible says, young people, we're with us and a young man cleanse his way by taking heed according to thy Thy word, if you want to straighten up your life, young people, you just follow the word of God. Because the word of God is good. Now, listen, Isaiah says, woe to those who call evil good and good evil. The Bible will help you. We're living in a world now where it is good to be bad and bad to be good. Did you know that? So much so that it has even, it has even changed our language, Sister Lorna. Nowadays, young people come to me and say, Pastor, you heard that song? That was a bad song, you know, Pastor. I say, it was a bad song. And you know what they mean? It was a good song. But they'll tell me it was a good song. I say, Pastor, that man is a bad dancer, you know, man. A man can break dancing bad. The language is changing. We're calling good evil and calling evil good. And it is translated behaviorally. Because now we are behaving in such a way that, that, that makes it appear as though bad is good. There was one man, honestly, it's the truth. My mom told me about it. She experienced it. The man went to a Chinese store years ago and he bought something and they gave him in a box. And when he reached home, when he reached outside and he realized the box had a whole lot of money, Mr. Chin, money in the box. And the man in his Christian honesty, you know what he did? Would you do that? Well, don't answer me. But the man decided to bring it back to Mr. Chin. And listen, police had to escort the man home. Because they said, the people said, you're crazy, man. You're foolish, man. You're, you're, in, in, in Grenada, they would say, you're stupid. In Jamaica, they would say, you're fool, fool. I said, what? The man was abused. Why was he abused? Because he was being honest. We have come to a time when it's good to be bad and it's bad to be good. But the word of God tells us we must follow Jesus and be good. The word of God is sweet. You know that? Oh boy, it is sweet. In the, in, the Bible says, I love it. When I, when I discovered your words, Jeremiah said, I ate them and they were sweet like honey. The word of God is sweet. Look at this. Here is a promise in the word of God. It says, if you abide in me, or remain in me, and my words remain in you, you shall ask for whatever you want, and I'll give it to you. That's the word of the Lord. Do you believe it? Well, let me tell you something. A man called me once from California, and he said to me, Pastor Gordon, my wife is leaving me. He said, I have no money. I am broke. And some people say, in, in, in where I live, I am broke. By, you know, the same thing. He said, I have no money and my wife leaving me. My credit card debts are high. I'm at the point of bankrupt and she's about to leave me. And believe me, we decided to have an, a, a, an anointing service for him. And we decided to put him, on, put him to get, we, we, well, he wasn't, he wasn't in Grenada. We were in Grenada. We were in Lansapine. Any Grenadians in the house? Lansapine? Uh, she just... And this, we had a prayer room in Lansapine, right? And we decided to put him on Skype. And pastor, as I stand here, I tell you the truth. The man had no money. He was distraught. We're talking about the Bible being sweet. Look at the text like this. It says, it tells us that if you ask anything, we got down on our knees. And we called somebody, we arranged for an elder to put the oil on him when we, we were, while we were doing the ceremony in, in Grenada. And we prayed and we claimed the promise of God. God's words are true and faithful. And all of God's promises will come to pass. Not one of them will fail. And we say, God, we are calling upon you now because you've promised to be our refuge and strength. And a very present help in the time of trouble. This brother is in trouble. We want you to help John. Please help him. And we prayed and we said amen. And we believe the word of the Lord. Next day, he called. And he said, folks, I need to tell you my testimony. He said, you know what? Within one hour after you all prayed for me, 
I got enough money to clear all my credit cards and all my debts. God's words are true. Somebody say amen out there. God, I was down in the University of Southern Caribbean once. I was education director and I was on the board. And, and I told the university president about the experience with John. And the university said, Pastor God, please put your hand on my head and pray right now. <laughs> God's words are true. Somebody say amen out there. Amen. Let me run along. I have a lot of things to tell you. I may not be able to tell you them all tonight. But if not, I'll tell you another night. We can overcome fear and anxiety with the word of God. Beloved, when God says that he's your shepherd, it means that you are well protected. God is your shepherd. You know, listen, when God is your shepherd, you can overcome fear and anxiety. I, 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 I went down to Colombia some time ago. I, I, I went to, the, to UNAC, Adventist University yeah, I want to learn Spanish. I went to do a little Spanish course in, in, in Colombia. But Colombia is a bad place. You think Jamaica is bad? You think Haiti is bad? Boy, boy, you might, you're not hearing about Colombia. I went to the place where there was a guy named Pablo Escobar. You remember that name? I went to the town where he was. And if they said to me, Pastor Gordon, walking in the streets, be careful. You know, this is, this is Pablo Escobar's place. You know, he was not everyone. Of course, he died. But the place is still bad. Let me tell you something. When God says he's your shepherd, he can protect you anywhere. There was a man in Colombia who had bodyguards in his yard. He had bodyguards in his living room. Bodyguards around the fence. And one lone gunman sneaked past the bodyguards outside and the bodyguards inside and killed him in his bed. But I want to let you know. That when you, when you read God's words and it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in what? Green pastures. He restoreth my soul. You can trust in the Lord. I listen to a witch. She's, she, she's, she's not a Christian. She used to be a witch. Yes, you know witches exist, right? Weekends. You are so sophisticated and anointed. You think this idea of witches belonged to the pre-scientific era when superstition was permeating the society. You're wrong. Witches and obia are alive. People work obia. And during the series, I have... Listen, if one, one day I might be able to do a series on spiritualism or on prophecy, but let me tell you, obia and witches and those things... I have seen it. I have, my, I have some experience with witch doctors and with, with demons. I'm going, someday I'll tell you about it. Demons talk to people and stuff. And Listen, I've, I have some experience in this ministry. Oh, only the good Lord has been leading me along. But this witch, she said, she and her, her folks, they got together and they did their incantations at midnight. And there was a pastor in the city. They didn't like the pastor. And they decided they were going to kill the pastor because the pastor was moving. Maybe he was like Pastor Rohan Sewell. He was an anointed man of God. And he was, he was, he was making waves in the city. And when they got together in their seance chamber, they decided they must eliminate the pastor. And the lady said, they put on their black gown. And they, at midnight, they went to their daggers and their stuff. And they were going towards, they parked their cars and they were going towards the pastor's house. They, they were going to kill him. But you know something? I tell people that when you're sleeping, there is somebody who is watching over you. Come on and say amen out there. You don't have to stay up at night. Some of you, you are up at night. You can't sleep because you have problems. Well, let me tell you something. If God is awake, he doesn't wear pajamas, then both of you don't need to be up. You go to your bed and sleep and allow Jesus to take care And the lady said, she went there. when they got there, they saw a, 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 a wall of angels around the pastor's house. She said, I've been in the witchcraft for so many years. I thought Satan was the greatest power. But from that night, I realized there was a power greater than that of Satan. She eventually left and she became a Christian. I listened to her testimony. I am saying, when you read God's words, it helps to take care of your fears and your anxieties. God says, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. And God means what he says. Oh, beloved, let me tell you something. I know that the word of God is true. 
Oh, my time is gone. I'll just tell you one more thing. I'll, I'll give you part two of this message another time. But let, let, me, let me just close with this. Listen, do you know, on one occasion, on one occasion, I was in an airplane. My, oh, my. It pays to walk with Jesus. And if you're here and you have not given Jesus your heart, do it tonight. If you have not yet signed up for your baptism, do it tonight. It pays to walk with Jesus. Somebody say amen out there. I have been serving God all of my adult life. And let me tell you something. If I had my life to live over, I would still decide for Jesus. Because he walks with me. He talks with me. He stands beside me in every circumstance. I can depend on my never failing help on him, Jesus. That's why I take time. I make the time to read his words. And you need to put aside Facebook and open the real book. Get off WhatsApp and get on the get op, open the Bible and listen. Sometimes you need the, you need the, the printed Bible. I know, I know. You are technologically sophisticated and you have iPads and all kinds of gadgets. But I am one old-fashioned person. I I still like the printed pages because I can confess my sin to you. Sometimes I take up the gadget to read the Bible and I hear ping, a message comes in and. Instead of going on the Bible that I intend to, you know, I'm going to check the message. And do I have anybody? Come on, be honest. Come on, raise your hand. <laughs> oh, yes, we're all guilty. But listen, when I take up this, there is no distraction. Amen. I saw my small son going to church once, and, and he, had, he had nothing in his hand. I said, Don Jay, read your Bible. And he said to me, Daddy, Bible and my, my, my in those days it was iPad touch. Bible and him now. I said, boy, you need to get a real bad one. He said to me, daddy, what are you trying to do? Hold back the time. <laughs> You're trying to hold back the time. I said, but you know, when you have godly parents, the Holy Ghost gives you wisdom. So I said, no, no, I believe in the whole the, the, the Bible as it is. I, I said, look here, you can be going to church and you forgot to charge that thing. And when they call for the hymn, you can't find it. But praise be to God. This don't need no charging. Talk to me, somebody. It's already charged by the Holy Ghost. So I read my word and I, God strengthens me my faith in God. So I was on this airplane. I prayed up and I read the word. Now I'm flying. And listen to me. The airplane got in trouble, Pastor. It was, oh, I tell you, it, it felt as though it was going to fall out the sky. You ever been in an elevator that's going down fast and it feels like your whole belly bottom come? Anybody here knows what I'm talking about? Him? Yes, man. And the plane was losing altitude and twisting. And, and so everybody, some people start to scream. And, and boy, I tell you, at first, I was a little afraid too, you know. But then I said, I put my flight in the hands of Jesus. And I claimed the promise. So when it started and, you know, when it started the trouble getting worse, I just said, Jesus, I asked you to carry me. And your word says that you are my refuge and strength and a very present help in the time of trouble. And now is the trouble, my dear. So after I prayed, I sat down in my seat. I was as cool as cucumber <laughs> because I just prayed. And around me, they were screaming and carrying on. And this white lady, this Caucasian lady, she looked at me. Get ready to sing me something. She looked at me. And yes, she was flabbergasted. She said, what's happening? And you're so calm. She said, what's going on? Now I had an opportunity to witness for Jesus. Now I can talk about the power of the word and the power of the promises. So I said, my dear sister. I believe in Jesus, and I believe in the power of his love letter, the word. And I read the word that says he's my refuge and strength, and my very present help in the time of trouble. And I believe the word. I believe the word. And that's why I can be cool in the midst of trouble. And as I sat here, 
the lady got up from her seat and she came up to me. Mr. Evangelist singing a bit, she hold me like this. And she sat right beside me like that, you know. And she never left my side until the plane landed. Oh, my strength, but watch this. My it touched my heart. She never had what I had. She needed it. She held on to me. What she didn't know was I was holding on to Jesus. She held on to me. And she let me go when the plane landed. And so after I collected my baggage, I was looking for her to maybe get some contact information. I saw her by the bar smoking and drinking and laughing. And I said to myself, in the time of danger, she wanted God. In the time of danger, she wanted God. Isn't that like most of you? Like a lot of people in our society? They want to drink, lick, and do all kinds of things until your head is pressing a dying pillow. Until the doctor says the pain that you're feeling is ovarian cancer. It is cervical cancer. It has already permeated your vital organs. You've only got about two weeks left. And now you want God. I say to you, don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait until trouble comes for you to find God and to get in touch with his word. Tonight is your opportunity. I invite the church to stand with me. I invite you to come to the Jesus who alone. The Jesus who alone can help. We have some cards. I want to pray for you. If you're not yet a baptized Christian and you'd like the pastor to remember you in his prayers, just raise your hand. You're not yet a baptized Christian, but you would like the pastor to pray for you when I'm praying on my knees. You want us to pray for you. Would you raise your hand that you can give Jesus your heart? Raise your hand. You'd like, I see a hand in the back. I see another hand right here. Just you, you would like the pastor to pray for you. Raise your hand. I see a hand over there again. Is there anybody else? Is somebody else? You don't want to wait until the plane is crashing. You don't want to wait until you're in trouble. But you want Jesus. Raise your hand. Say, Lord. Lord, I want you, Lord. I want you, Lord. Hallelujah. You alone are my heart's desire. You alone. You want Jesus. I give you Jesus tonight. The written word and the living word. God's love letter to man. Don't delay. Don't delay. If you know that if you were to die tonight you would not see the face of Jesus you know if you were to die tonight hell would be your destination but tonight you want to cross over the line you want to have that faith that hope you want to share the blessed hope of Jesus I ask you just raise your hand we're going to pray for you. If you haven't done so yet, you know who you are. I'm going to count down. And then I'm going to pray. You're not yet baptized. You're not yet a Christian. But you want Jesus. He's so sweet. Just raise your hand and take a card. I'm stopping at zero. Five. Counting down. Four, won't you raise your hand? Put the devil to shame. Give Jesus your heart. You alone are my strength. 
I was doing a meeting, I said a meeting about this in Florida. And then a member of the United States spirit. Army was there. As I started to count down, just before I ended, I heard some rejoicing. The parents were rejoicing as that soldier decided to take the hand of the soldier of the cross. Two. One. Here's your chance. The heads are bowed. For those who have raised your hands and have taken your cards, we're going to be praying for you. Fill out the cards with your name and address, phone number. Just as we prayed for that man. And in one hour, God sent somebody to give him the blessing that he needed. We're going to be praying for you. We don't know what's happening in your life. If you have taken the card, fill out the card. Don't leave here unless you've done that. And if you didn't respond during the altar call and you want to take the card still, go ahead. Come and see me when we're done. But don't leave here unless you make a decision for Jesus. Let's pray. My pastor, please come and pray for us. Let us pray. Oh Lord, our oh God, oh excellent is your name in all the earth. We praise you, we adore you because there's none like you. Not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. We praise you this evening for the word you have sent to us through your love letter, the Bible. That you love us with an everlasting love, unconditional love. You love us in spite of who we are, not because of who we are. And Lord, we just stand amazed at the wonder of it all. And yet a greater wonder brings us to our knees when we think of Calvary. The greatest manifestation of your love. You gave your only begotten son, the unique one, the Bona Guinea. Lord, we stand amazed that for sinful beings like we, you send the Holy One to die our death. Lord, we, we, we ask ourselves the question, what can we give in exchange? Lord, it's just a gift. And you said with loving kindness, you are drawing us. And so, Lord, it is not because of hellfire why we are serving you. It's not because of the judgment that is coming, but because of your love. You have been drawing us from darkness into marvelous light, from a life of sin to a life of righteousness. And Lord, if we don't resist your drawing, all of us will be pulled to you because you are drawing us with a cord of love that cannot be broken. And I pray, oh God, that we will not resist the prompting of the Spirit, but will submit ourselves in light, in view of the cross. Oh God, I pray like the Apostle Paul, the love of Jesus constrains us. It motivates us. It propels us to serve you. And so we thank you, Lord, for those who have responded. We pray that you'll seal their names right now in the book of life. And we pray that you will grant them the strength, the courage, so that when the waters will be troubled this coming Sabbath, they will make their calling and election sure because you love them and in return they're loving you. So Lord, I pray that you bless them and cause your face to shine upon them. Thank you for the members of the Malton Seventh Adventist Church. We pray that you'll baptize us anew with your Holy Spirit. And because of your goodness towards us, 
It, it leads us to repentance. And in turn, Lord, help us to bring others to the foot of the cross. So we thank you for today. We thank you for this message. And now as we're about to go, we pray that you'll dismiss us with your blessings. But not from your presence is what we're asking in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So the Lord bless you. And the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. And the Lord be gracious unto you now and forevermore. Amen. Well, good night. We're going to have the, okay, the theme song. And please remember tomorrow night is rest night, so don't come. We, we won't be here. Am I correct, Mr. Evangelist? Huh? You, you, they, we, they can come tomorrow? Okay. So tomorrow night is rest night. Get some rest and come back fresh Tuesday when we'll do it again. And bring all your friends and your loved ones. Shalom. The peace of the Lord be with you. Thank you so much, Pastor Jerome. Christ for the crisis was so powerfully presented as he talked about and opened up to us the greatest love letter that we would ever read. We don't want to miss you that are online. If you were touched by the message tonight, we want to hear from you. We'd like for you to call us, and the number is 416-679-0897. Or you can visit us at www.maltinsda.com. We want to hear from you. We want to know how you have been touched. If you need a prayer, give us a call. We want to pray with you. We have a prayer line. We want to pray with you. And we invite you also to come and experience the energy and the power that is in this place with us. And just like it was said, that we will not be here tomorrow night, but we will be again on Tuesday. Now, before we go, I want to also let you know that um, for those who are here, that there is refreshment. So we can please stay back and partake with us. Thank you. Yes. Amen. Please remain standing as we sing Learning to Love.
All right, as you go, I just want to add, remember, on Tuesday evening, please walk with a friend or a neighbor. I have a very special message from the Lord. I am different now. I would like you to be there. I would like somebody else to come along with you. So please carpool and bring somebody. Thank you. Thank you, technicians.